NFO moves on farm price chaos. A new one-year membership agreement and a campaign to dispose large stocks of wheat which is depressing all farm prices. Large blocks of feeder cattle expected to stair-step prices. NFO members begin delivery on new hog contracts. For more on these stories, here's NFO news analyst Phil Allen. As the price crisis in farm commodities and agricultural credit deepens, we turn to an important move by the NFO to combat it. Here is Orrin Lee Staley, president of the National Farmers Organization, with a report on the NFO Board of Directors' decision to offer special one-year memberships. Orrin Lee? Well, Phil, the National Board of Directors had a meeting in the last week of July. Instead of adjourning the meeting, they recessed the National Board meeting to go out and talk to the members of the NFO and to farmers to find out really what the farmers and ranchers wanted to do. We were told time and again that many farmers and ranchers now realize that they have to unite for collective bargaining. But over the years, they had been told that the three-year membership agreement was such that they couldn't get out and that it was so binding, which was not true, that they would be tied to, to something they couldn't get loose from. So we decided to have a one-year membership agreement to be offered to the producers in this country of agricultural commodities, the farmers and the ranchers, that would automatically terminate at the end of one year. We have confidence in our nationwide system of bargaining that we know that we can deliver for the producers in this country and that we want to show our confidence because we have to perform immediately. Well, wasn't this decision to have special one-year memberships tied to the present price crisis? We believe that the farm price situation is so serious that if we do not take action now and farmers do not unite their bargaining power to price their products nationwide, because that's the only way it can be done, from coast to coast, border to border, that it will be catastrophe not a year or two years or three years from now, but with the prices at the present levels of a dollar and eighty cent a bushel corn, even less, of a dollar and ninety cent bushel wheat, with futures on hogs in February resting now at thirty three, thirty four cents or under, and the cattle futures going down from uh, now and, and then in October and down in March or February, that it means that 37 cent cattle, all these tied together mean catastrophe because they're only about uh, a half of what the farmers expected on most of their commodities. Certainly, this means that it will soon be re reflected in farm price uh, values for land because you'll then soon have to settle to the, for the productive value of the farms. And you can't do it uh, with this type of a situation, and by do it I mean survive, with this type of a situation that is here upon us now. And it takes united action, and we wanted to show that the NFO had the system, the courage, and the willingness to lead the effort for justice and fairness and they didn't have to look to Washington. They don't have to look anywhere else but in their own lots, their own homesteads, and realize they have to unite their production nationwide. How is the one-year proposal being received? The reception of the farmers and ranchers and the one-year membership agreement uh, has been excellent at this point. It's substantiating the reports that we'd had that many farmers and ranchers said, yes, something needs to be done. That they, with a clear understanding it's only for one year uh, membership agreement, that they are coming to the NFO because they want a chance to unite their strength for fairness and justice and fair prices. NFO believes the time is now for united bargaining action by farmers and ranchers coast to coast. Because of the farm price crisis, with 10 to 20 percent of farmers unable to refinance this year, the NFO has launched a double-barreled program to reverse the situation. First, NFO authorized a new one-year membership agreement to speed up organizing farmers and their production for collective bargaining. 
Second, NFO has launched a campaign to dispose of half a billion bushels of extra wheat, which is dragging down all grain prices and, in turn, livestock. Oren Lee, supposing we begin by describing the NFO action plan on wheat. The board of directors of the NFO met, and after a long discussion and a lot of detailed information, took a good look at the real key problems that's causing a dollar and eighty cent corn or less, a dollar and ninety cent a bushel of wheat, or causing the futures and hogs to drop to thirty three, thirty four cents for uh, February, and for the cattle futures to be down to thirty seven cents or under. Uh, why and where was the main problem? And of course, the impact that was sure to fall on dairy. With these market conditions, what does the NFO plan to do, actually? We've decided on the facts at hand and from our own knowledge of farming that cheap grain means, uh, means cheap livestock and cheap milk at the farm level. We also decided that it was a little foolish to let an extra five or six hundred million bushel of wheat uh, be in a position to kill the price on six billion bushel of corn, on a billion and a half bushel of soybeans, on another billion bushel of grain, on 75 million head of hogs to be slaughtered approximately in the next 12 months, and for 30 million head of cattle that will be slaughtered in the next uh, 12 months. That we ought to take action where the problem really is, and that's with wheat hanging over the market with supposedly a great supply, and we don't buy the fact that the 1.1 1. Uh, 1 billion bushel carryover is really there. We don't think there's that much there because no allowance or not enough allowance for quality, the uh, standards of the wheat out of condition, and we believe there's two to 300 million bushel that has already been fed that has not been subtracted. But we know that if we would immediately feed up five or six hundred million bushel, and I mean in the next three or four months, that if we'd feed that much wheat up, that this would take away the cloud hanging over all the markets because there's a good supply outlet on corn and soybeans for export. But as long as the world feels that we have this much wheat hanging over the head of agriculture in this country, then they don't feel there's any necessity of hurrying up buying. What effect would this have on the price? It means that then the grain prices could go up and we're asking the farmers, the members of the NFO, to seal their corn and feed wheat. That way we can feed up from in our own feedlots or our own dairy barns uh, the problem that is going to bring agriculture down clear across the entire agricultural spectrum. That was Oren Lee Staley, president of the National Farmers Organization, reporting on key decisions of the NFO National Board. He said that if farmers feed wheat to use up the half a billion extra bushels, it will keep that relatively small amount of wheat from killing the market for five to six billion bushels of corn, which can either be fed or exported. Cheap feed means cheap livestock prices. As studies by animal nutritionists show that wheat can profitably be substituted for no more than 40% of the ration for cattle, up to 50% for dairy cattle, and up to 50% for hogs. Dave Miller is head of the feeder calf division of the NFO. He's going to describe the program the National Farmers Organization operates for getting a fair price for feeder cattle. The principle is to get them from the ranch to the feeding operation as quickly and directly as possible, and with as much upward pressure on prices for the cattleman as possible. Dave, first, why don't you describe how it operates? Okay, in brief, Phil, first members sign their feeders on contract for sale. Then these members attend a ratification meeting where prices which have been established that day by NFO bargainers are presented to them. Then the cattle are usually delivered two days after uh, this ratification meeting to the collection point. Now, why should a cow-calf operator go through the NFO program? Well, the NFO feeder program offers its members an excellent opportunity to market cattle and influence the price level at the same time. Uh, this is very necessary because today's market is about 65% of the level necessary to make a reasonable profit in a cow-calf operation. The cow-calf operator today has the strength to influence the beef market because a very high percentage of the mother cows in the United States 
are owned by independent family farmers and ranchers. We can talk about the problems of imports, we can talk about beef referendums or whatever, but the answer to the price problem in the beef industry is for cattlemen to unite and use their combined strength to put a price tag on their cattle. Well, Dave, could you describe the facilities that the NFO maintains for this? Yes, NFO has hundreds of member-owned and operated livestock collection points across the United States. By going through the NFO feeder program, the rancher can be assured that his cattle are going directly to the feedlot or backgrounder, thus eliminating the profiteering which has always been a part of the cattle business. Why don't you list the advantages that the cow-calf operator would have with the NFO program? Yes, number one, your cattle will be sold in a way which will cause the market price of cattle to rise. This is done by taking cattle away from the buyers who have been buying them, causing them to bid up uh, the prices that they bid for cattle. Uh, number two, you know what the price and conditions of the sale will be before your cattle are delivered to the collection point. Number three, your cattle are protected from the farm through the collection point by NFO insurance. Number four, your receipts are protected by the constant check of the NFO credit department on all buyers and the NFO reserve in the unlikely case of a buyer payment failure. Number five, you know you receive honest weights and grades because these functions are performed by NFO members and staff. Well, those advantages really sound specific, Dave. Does this NFO program look toward the future effect on the market? Yes, at this time, Phil, we have NFO members across the United States who have already contracted their calves at this time for fall delivery at prices which are above the current market level. We feel this is necessary in order to put a floor under the market and give the farmer and rancher the advantage of pricing his product ahead of the time that he will deliver it. Well, Dave, why will this NFO pressure on feeder cattle help the whole cattle industry? If feeder prices are stabilized, Phil, this will give the feedlot operator a much stronger base to work from. That was Dave Miller, head of the NFO feeder cattle division. He mentioned at the beginning of our conversation that there are ratification meetings in a given local area. These local meetings are really where the bargaining pressure begins. The negotiators submit to the ratification meeting a price for the cow-calf producers to consider based on up-to-the-minute data. The negotiators get this information by monitoring feeder prices on a nationwide basis through wire services and through hourly contacts with members and other feeders across the country. There's a good example of NFO contracting in Montana recently where the members put 2,000 head of this year's calf crop on contracts for fall delivery. NFO negotiators are now blocking at least 4,000 head for a contract price stair-stepped a dollar a hundred weight above previously quoted prices. And additional percentages are in the offing as the NFO blocks grow. The NFO hog division is conducting a big drive to supply new contracts that point the way toward cost of production clauses in hog contract negotiations. Here's Alan Scraw, head of the NFO hog division, telling what a challenge this ambitious project brings to the American hog farmer. We have signed many contracts with packers, and we are in the process of filling these. However, we have got to fill them to completion. We cannot come up with a portion of the numbers, or half of them, or three-quarters of them, or 90% of them. They have to be filled 100%. It's no bluff. It's no propaganda. It's just the hard, cold facts that in order to renegotiate and improve upon these contracts, these contracts have got to be filled and filled 100%. There's no easy way about it. It's hard work, and it's got to be done. Alan Scraw talks about the meaning and the future potential for producers in these new NFO hog contracts. We have accepted and ratified a contract with several of the major packers and a number of intermediate uh, packers. This is probably the most significant thing that has ever happened to the hog department since its inception. It happened because of the producers in the country moving through the program. More hogs means more opportunity for producers. We're now in a position to build upon and expand these contracts, plus add these new ones that we're talking about. It can be done with additional production. Building bargaining power for hog producers is the objective, but the National Farmers Organization is building in the process a lot of specific knowledge. To fill these contracts, NFO keeps accurate data on numbers of producers and specific tonnage. You cannot bargain from a position of strength 
when you're wondering just exactly how many producers will be in the program tomorrow and how many will be the next day. We have got to know. We can win in 1977 and, put the, and prevent this price from dropping if we act now. If we won't, well, I don't know. Maybe. There's a lots of maybes. Maybe the price will go up because the corn man dried out. Maybe it'll go up because the Milo man dried out. Maybe it'll go up because your neighbor's hogs died of pseudo rabies. Maybe it'll go up because the people ate more pork. There's a lot of maybes. But let's do it from the position of a businessman, organize and price our uh, product, do it from a position of strength. Warren Lee Staley, president of the NFO, talks about the economic background of the new hog contracts. Statistics are now available showing that 10 to 20 percent of the farmers varying by states will not be able to refinance their operations. And another 10 to 20 percent are in a questionable category. Why? The prices farmers and ranchers are receiving is only about half what they expected to get for many of their products. The cost price squeeze of fixed costs that have continued to risen have really put them in a chaotic condition. And Staley describes how the National Farmers Organization is able to implement a nationwide system to supply contracts. The ability to do this is a result of a system that has been built and a system that can be used. Farmers have the alternative do nothing or unite their production and price that production. The most important thing that the NFO has to offer, and the only thing it really has to offer, is the opportunity for farmers to unite their production nationwide so they can price their production. And that's what the hog producers must do, and that's what the NFO is all about. The NFO has been making the point today that putting bargaining power in the hands of farmers and ranchers takes more than the mere acceptance of the idea of collective bargaining. It takes, first of all, the experience and the putting together of the facilities for moving the product in the farmer's interest. Phil Allen for NFO News. And that for today is something to think about.